even to the point where we're on a podcast. Yeah. We're doing a podcast right now. And we doing dances in Costa Rica. <laughs> was I dance? Oh, well, I was rubbing my <laughs> pregnant belly. It was a dance. Belly's dance. It was a two-step. Don't you say I'm dancing on the <laughs> internet. Because I, I really told myself, we're not going to do the TikTok. <laughs> you know what? We're going to do one before I leave. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> it's not happening. Hey, everyone. I'm Morgan Debon, a passionate entrepreneur and life advisor. With the Journey Podcast, you'll discover that success isn't about the destination. It's about the journey. I'm sharing stories of amazing people who've taken control of their lives. Join me on my own journey to discover the secret sauce behind reaching success with permission from no one else. Okay, you guys, welcome back to the Journey Podcast with me, Morgan Devon. I'm here with my good (laughs) friend, Ronnie. Ronnie Brown, CEO, founder, skincare extraordinaire, (laughs) business advisor, all the things. You may know her from her Instagram. You may know her from her new YouTube channel. She has a top rated podcast and we're going to talk about all things life, business, and also giving people advice on how to manage their personal brand. So Ronnie was gracious enough to come to CEO Spring Break, which is my annual retreat that I do with black entrepreneurs and founders who are looking to scale their business and grow their revenue and their teams. And it was in Costa Rica. So it wasn't a small ask. I was like, can you come to Costa Rica? Had a ball. (laughs) We had so much fun. Definitely a lit experience. It was so good. I gotta make an adjustment. I'm sorry. How can I keep going? We should keep this in the episode because Josh, this is Josh, like, everyone. As soon as he comes over, I start adjusting yeah. everything. This is Josh. Josh is my partner in crime. He has a production company. Her and man, her man, her man. <laughs> He's my man, my man, my man. And also the, the most man, anal man I know. <laughs> and the man who makes it happen. <laughs> We're, back. We're back. That is staying in the video episode. No, it's not. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so see a spring break. So one of the sessions when we talk to entrepreneurs and founders and also just really ambitious people who are trying to figure out their place in this world of digital. So Ronnie talked about how to build your personal brand, but in a way that feels authentic to you. Because a lot of the times what I hear from people who are like, I don't know what to do with my Instagram account. I feel silly being on TikTok. Like I didn't choose my profession, whatever it is, whether I'm an executive at a company, but I want to get be known for thought leadership, or I'm an entrepreneur and I need to raise funding. So I need people to like know my story. Yeah. It feels weird because they didn't sign up to be an influencer. They didn't sign up to be a public figure. So I want to talk a little bit about your advice for people and your own journey, you know, becoming a public figure through sharing everything about your life, but you actually don't share everything about your life. We're friends in real life. (laughs) So I know, I know what's going on behind the scenes. You got to keep a little bit to yourself. Just a little bit. When you share everything, I feel like you can share everything. But one of my friends, Anifa, Uh um, who owns Hanifa, she's like, be sure that you just save something for yourself. Just a little something. Just a little something. Yes. And she's, I guess she's like back from maternity leave at this point. Yes. Yeah, she was, she had a beautiful baby shower. Anyways, so yes, that is the topic for today. Let's talk about it. Well, what do we need to know? What do the people need to know? So I think that, you know, people always think that if you are sharing any part of your life, then you're automatically an influencer. So let me just say this. Breathe. Relax. <laughs> Just have a seat, chill out. You don't automatically become an influencer right. just because you take people on a journey with you. Yep. That does not make you an influencer. It makes you a human being. It makes you a everyday person. You know, I have to pat because I'm pregnant. <laughs> I've been sweating so much. It makes you a... You want me to stop, Josh? Uh-uh, okay. Keep going. Okay. We're going to keep it in. All right. The people know I'm pregnant, so <laughs> I am hot under these lights. It makes you an everyday person who's mm-hmm. taking people along the journey with you. And I just think that we just have to get comfortable. Um, when we start talking about building a personal brand, everyone gets uptight. They're like, am I oversharing? They're analyzing every single yeah. thing. Am I sharing too much? Am I sharing too little? The goal is for you to just be authentic and show up as yourself. Mm-hmm. The goal is not for you to do what everybody else is doing on social media. 
media. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the big mistake that we make when we are building personal brand. We're looking at everyone else. We're looking at their aesthetic. We're looking at, you know, what they're posting. We're looking mm-hmm. at if they're dancing, if they're not, you know, if they're doing workout videos, right. if they're doing get ready with me. And you are like, okay, this is my strategy. Right. But the truth is that's not your strategy. Mm-hmm. Your strategy is not duplication. It's not looking at someone else and mimicking what they're doing. Okay, you have skincare. I have skincare. You have this. I have th- That's not what this is about. This is about waking up and doing you. And that's all it is. Just be exactly who you are. Just be exactly Get paid to be yourself. You yeah. Right? And I think that's the part that trips up a lot of people is that they're overthinking it. They're planning. They're like, okay, well, I'm going to do this video shoot or this photo shoot. And then that's actually the excuse that then causes them to delay because yeah. they build this entire expectation up in their mind on all the things that they're going to do. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, but meanwhile, you could have just been going live on Instagram. Exactly. Believe it or not, the stuff that is unedited, (laughs) unscripted, right? When we don't have this stage content, that is the stuff that really takes off. Right. And that's what I'm learning, right? You just show up, you just press play, you forget that the camera is on, you show what you're doing, you don't have to talk perfect, you don't have to have this aesthetic going on, you just be you. And people fall in love with people. Mm -hmm. I've been saying this a lot lately, and I'm going to just reinforce it. People are not buying products and services and companies. They are buying people now. I agree. It is no longer about the push. It is 100% about pulling people in. And that happens through trust, authenticity, and being consistent with just showing up online Mm -hmm. in an imperfect way. Mm -hmm. I think you're right. And I think that I actually hear this a lot from my friends and some of the mentees that I have that have beauty and CPG companies because they built their brands being that public figure, you know, whether they have to be the ones every time they have a new product, they have to be the one in the picture with the new product. They have to be the one, you know how it is. Mama is is transitioned from that. Let me, let me just tell you the the crazy thing. When I started my company, when I started online, Mm -hmm. um, I was doing more of like an affiliate marketing style business where I was like marketing products for like another company. This was years ago when Mm -hmm. I first got my foot in the game. And I was making, you know, seven figures a year doing that, six wow. figures a month doing that. And I right. was only getting paid like 15% commission mm. at that time. I was the face of everything. Of, and then I realized- of their brand. Exactly. But also what I started to do was transition and make more of my content about me. Mm. So best friends, the best thing that you can do <laughs> in this season, like if you're selling anything, yeah. you also want to make sure that it's about you. Right. That you're not just holding up product all day. Like, yeah, yeah, Yeah. I feel that. You know, it's more organic. It needs to be organic and it needs to be built around you. So what I realized this time, because of course I launched my beauty brand, my Mm -hmm. beauty and feminine care brand. I'm like, I'm not going to be the face because I see Mm. so many girls like, hustling and burned bustling, out. burnt out. You start a beauty brand. You got to be the face of the beauty brand. Mm-hmm. People see me and they see my skin and they're like, okay, what, you know, what does she use? That's different. But when I am the face of it, when every photo shoot is me, when every video is me, it is hard because especially in this world, we live in a world where it's like all about, you know, they're looking at parents all the right. time. And when you coin yourself as the face of something, what happens when you have a weight loss company and everyone is so used to seeing you fit with abs and then you might mess around and gain 40 pounds and now they don't respond to the models. Yeah. But if you start it with the models, if you right. start it behind the scenes and it's not you, mm-hmm. since you can be somewhere in Greece. Yeah. And the photo shoots are happening. Hello. And you're directing. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. And that is Remotely. a level of freedom that I want now. So I've made that mistake. Yeah. Let me just speak from experience. Not saying, oh, girl, don't do it. I'm saying, girl, I've done it. Don't do it. Yeah. There's a balance, yeah. right? Like Blavity is not called Morgan Devon Media Company because I didn't want the company to be tied to my personal brand. Now, if you are in the know and you're within the industry, then you know, okay, you know. CEO. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. <laughs> right. But if you're like a random person who is just following travel noir, you have People no idea. Have a clue. You they have don't no have idea. A clue. <laughs> right? They don't know who the girl is. And I'm okay with that. That well, is my design. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. But at the same time, what I was really intentional about was building my brand in the circles that mattered in the industry. So to me, there's certain buckets. There's your industry and your professional brand as relates to the decision makers, the power players, the king makers, the queen makers in your world. 
critical that they know who you are and what you're doing. I call that my LinkedIners. Yeah. <laughs> For my world, that's LinkedIn. That's one thing I've learned from you. Yeah. <laughs> Queen of LinkedIn. <laughs> queen. People on Instagram are like, oh, your LinkedIn is not the same. They are not the same <laughs> What's higher strategies. than the queen? It might be the king. You might be the king of LinkedIn. <laughs> whoever, whoever like decides who the king is. <laughs> but LinkedIn, and then, then there's category two, which I call my champions. Yeah. These are people who are rooting for me, who are speaking my name in closed doors, who I've been along on the Blavity journey since day one. These are the people who listen to the podcast in the first episode. You know, the people who are on the email list and open every email. Yes. And those are the people actually that have really helped me build my business, to be honest, because they're the loyal champions who are, they might work at Google and say, you know what, we should be at Afrotech this year. Yeah. You know, we should sponsor We should Afrotech sponsor this Afrotech year. this those year. Are the friends. You know, like, put me in the room. Put me in the room. <laughs> okay, put me in the room, sis. <laughs> Typically, it's black women. So shout out to black women. Exactly. So those champions, and then there's like everybody else. And I really actually try not to cater to the everybody else. Yeah, you don't really do much of that. Nah, because I'm just like, you guys are fleeting. Like, mm. y- you are literally just here for the sound bite. Yeah. You don't actually want to get into it. You don't actually want to be supporting me. And as soon as something is said or done that you don't agree with, you're unfollowing. You're out. Yeah. So I cannot solve for these people. So professionals and my champions, some people call this their, you know, super loyal audience, their first thousand followers, you know, the people who have been there forever. Yeah. Those are the people I try to solve for. And I think that mindset has been really freeing because then I really don't worry about everybody else. Like I don't wear makeup in half of my videos, even for the okay. podcast. But we got cute today. We got a little more. <laughs> I knew she was gonna get cute, so I got cute. I was like, well, we're not gonna do it. She was like, what I'm not about to do is let you show up here glowing. Uh-uh. And I'm about to be sitting over here, so I'm getting glam. I yes. walked in, I was like, oh, the glam team is here. Shout out to Courtney. <laughs> my Courtney, not your Courtney. So, but yeah, the glam team was here today. But I, and even for work, I do the same thing. Like when I am, even with, my employees and my team, they will see no makeup me more than makeup me. Yeah. When I wear makeup, they're like, what are you doing today? Exactly. <laughs> Where are you going? And and I think that was even a really big part of me building my brand. Yeah. yeah I was in the kitchen with a robe on. Showing them. You know, showing them like, this is just what life really looks like. Right. I know you think it's glamorous all the time on social, but if you were to ever pop on one of my lives, best friend is in the kitchen. I feel like I've been in your house a hundred times. Exactly. <laughs> and My hair is not done. It might be just wet yeah. and curly. And we are in there having real life conversations. And I think that it's important that people see both. Mm-hmm. I think that's really important. And I think that's what we're seeing is trending. Even celebrities now, like when you see a celebrity with no makeup, it like winds up on people's Instagram like look at so and so with no makeup or some of the women who are incredible actresses are starting to age because Duh. We age. Because we age. And they're like, look at so-and-so with no Botox. I'm like, this is should this not be is news. <laughs> this yeah. should be normal. But yeah, what would you say to the men who are listening to this? I think women, we have so many examples of so many things, but I think a lot of men feel intimidated to be a public figure if they're not like an athlete or a celebrity. How yeah. do you advise like men on how they approach their online persona? I think that men have so much power right now. And one of the things that I'm admiring about the guys who are taking that Pause. leap. Honey, I need you to get me my things. I can't, I can't reach it. I can feel my sweat. Can you see it? I got so much liquid in me. Girl, <laughs> let me just tell you, you talking to somebody who done, done had it four kids. Ten times and over. I have deli- Did I tell you I delivered my daughter in my house? No. On the floor <laughs> and she was breached, Which, baby. Oh no. Feet first. Like, yeah. So Honey, I have done it all. I had a spit cup. I had a spit cup that I would spit in every 60 seconds when I was pregnant. Just liquids. Yeah, this is the real life. You know, welcome to the journey, (laughs) the the unedited version. (laughs) This is uncut and unedited. (laughs) To the guys, you know, you were saying, what would you say to guys Mm -hmm. who are, you know, really trying to become a public figure or put themselves out there online right now? I think that is super important that they know and understand that they can dominate right now. Mm -hmm. You see so many guys leading from just 
you know, the perspective of business. Mm -hmm. But what I'm loving right now online is the men who are able to mix in their everyday lives, whether it's health or wellness. And I love to see men taking care of themselves, Mm -hmm. like going to the gym, like taking care of their skin. Let me just say there is nothing that I'm just like, yes, skincare routines. (laughs) Is this your regimen here? I love to see it. I think that now is an opportunity for them to pull more people in from that space and then blend in your business with that, right? And then what it does is it makes you more approachable. Mm -hmm. It makes you more relatable. Mm -hmm. And then you you gotta slide the value in. Like right now, if you are trying to like show people that you can do something and you're trying to build your brand, you don't have to go value, 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 value. You ever go to someone's page and every video is like, Five steps to two steps <laughs> yes. to one step to, and you like, Lord, let me get off of this robot page, right? right. Is anyone <laughs> falling for this? Is anybody doing it? You don't have to do that. Yeah. You can just show everyday life, and then you can add a little value. I say this all the time to my mentees. I'm like, you got to sneak the game in with people. And when I say game, I mean like knowledge and wisdom. Mm-hmm. This is a time where you got to like entertain them and then like sneak educate them because mm-hmm. they don't want to know that you're like giving them real gems. You can't just become an educator overnight. I agree. You got to entertain. We call it like edutainment. Right. It's like you educate and entertain at the same time. So this is the perfect time because guys are getting brand deals right now. Yep. Guys are making a killing, building yep. communities. And women support men mm-hmm. like crazy. I'm seeing a lot of new guys popping up online that are building brands. One of my favorites, shout out to Carlos. Carlos mm-hmm. kills it with his content mm-hmm. and his dad as well. I always think about Carlos, how he set the tone for so many guys. Now I see everyone like vacuuming their carpets mm-hmm. in the morning. I'm like, okay, well, Carlos. Were y'all doing this before? <laughs> or, or just for the gram? It's for the gram. I'm here for it either way. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> I'm seeing it, but it's amazing to be able to influence people. Yeah, I think that I've definitely seen a shift where there's more room now for men to at least show their full selves and yes. they don't have to just be so like, oh, I'm a businessman. Yeah. Like, you know, the, the evolution <laughs> is happening. The evolution is definitely happening. And I think the more that these men embrace it, the better it is for their own mental health as well, because there's, you're not constantly thinking about, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the wrong thing? Yeah. You know? So yes, men listening, get started. Yeah. You can do this. Like and this is the time. To Ronnie's point, you can dominate because there are so many women. Absolutely. So many women, every woman in America is building an online following. Yeah. But if you are one of the 5% or 10% or 20% of men doing it, mm-hmm. baby, you're going to get in all the brand deals. When we do brand deals at Blavity, you know, we get pitches from brands and then we have to come up with like, here's the influencers or creators that we want to work with. We are now getting way more RFPs, requests for proposals that are asking for a mix of male and female Yeah, for beauty products, for wellness products, not just like automotive. Yeah. You know, it's not just your average for a commercial. Nah, like, no. <laughs> nah, this is like stuff that normally would have been for guys. self-care. So I think it is a really growing category and men are doing the target runs. So there's lots of money out there to mm-hmm. grab, grab it, grab, grab it, it, fellas, grab it. <laughs> okay. So tell me how you prioritize your platforms because you have a lot of different audiences that you speak to at different times. And I also noticed it seems like you go through seasons, like sometimes you're promoting your beauty brand, sometimes you're promoting the podcast. How do you decide what yeah, happens Yeah, so when? for me, it is really all about working on the platforms that are working for me. I kind of do the opposite of what everyone else does. And what I see is more people, they try to work in their weaknesses. Mm. Honey, I work in my strength. Mm. So like the platform that works for me, that's where you're going to see me all the time. Like I work in my strengths. I outsource my weaknesses. So you really won't see me on LinkedIn like that because that's not really my vibe. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of speaking there and I do post like when I'm speaking at events and I, I pop on there probably once a week. Right. All right. But I really love relationships and platforms like Instagram Mm -hmm. platforms like YouTube, they give me the opportunity to build relationships and be my Mm. authentic space. I don't have to be in my business suits. Mm -hmm. Like, like I feel like when I'm on Instagram, it's like, girl, go get your blazer, you know, like (laughs) put your blazer on today. But when I'm on 
platforms like Instagram or now like Threads or right. Facebook or TikTok, I can just be me. Mm-hmm. And I love flowing in those spaces. So I prioritize who and what is working for me. Mm-hmm. And right now, my go-to platform is Instagram. It's also Threads. I love Threads because I don't even have to turn the camera on. I and hate Threads right now. Really? It's so boring to me. I think that you have to use that platform differently. I yeah. think that that's not the place that you go on and you're like, come and buy this or come and buy that. No. It is more of this is where I'm coming to dump my thoughts yeah. Offline. And when I say offline, I mean like not business. Right. I'm just on there just kind of talking and it really just works for me. Yeah. So it has really worked for me a whole lot over there because I'm not trying to be an expert. Over no. There. Yeah. Definitely not. And I the... think that's what is going to take it to the next level. You know, I I stopped using Twitter probably like four years ago because mm-hmm. it's just so it was toxic. Yeah. And so there was nothing positive about it. It was either people mad about some article we wrote or <laughs> mad that they didn't get a response. It was just everybody was mad. I'm like, yeah, yeah. some mad ass. Twitter people. people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're like, I'm not doing I'm this. I'm deleting this app off my phone. And I love Twitter. Twitter is a client, <laughs> you know, yeah. I was a client. So yeah, it's definitely was tough, tough breakup. But from a news perspective, I felt like Twitter was really good. So even though I didn't have a like active Twitter account, I would still, if there was an earthquake or something happening or like, I would still go to Twitter yeah. to just confirm or deny. Yeah. I feel like we're missing a place to confirm or deny and threads is intentionally, Mark Zuckerberg has said, threads is not a place for news and they are systemically deprioritizing news. So it's not going to be a place for us to be like, y'all saw the fight in Alabama. Like that's not the place where that's going to pop up. Yeah. And but it is. But go ahead. <laughs> but it is because that's who we follow. Yeah, exactly. But like the white folks are going to be like, what are the people? What are they talking about? <laughs> like, you know, like they're not going to naturally see that until yeah. it's made it through all of our memes. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but we would have found it immediately. We found it immediately from Instagram. Exactly. So my thing is if threads is not going to be for news and real time information and Instagram is for your Photos, daily videos, videos, yeah, you know, then threads is my daily thoughts. Like, yeah, what is it, it, it like, is an extension of your daily thoughts. Thoughts it's an like, extension of much. your daily thoughts. And I let me just say this. Don't think about it. Yeah. Like that's how I am. You know, you were asking me how I prioritize my platforms. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's like I have my companies, I have Girl CEO, mm-hmm. and then I also have Holistic. Mm-hmm. But for my personal brand, it's me. And when you were asking like how I filter those things in and do I decide when I'm going to post this or when I'm going to post that, my personal brand is it's the tree trunk. And then there are the extensions and that's, you know, the branches that are coming out of the tree. So when you're seeing my personal page, you're going to see all things that revolve around my personal life, me Mm -hmm. building my companies, more BT as all of that type of content. Mm -hmm. And I can filter and push people out to those different platforms through personal brand. Yeah. I feel you. So I'm that's going to watch. I'm, I'm just going to watch you do it. Girl, and just sit so back and just one of the things, thread or like it. <laughs> one of the things that I have to say is like, you are coming out with it. Like when we first started kicking it, you were yeah. like, girl, you can have that. Like I'm yeah. not doing this. Yeah. And I'm like, Morgan, you got to do this. And yeah. now you dancing, holding the belly, like baby, you coming out. <laughs> We're seeing the walking videos, getting out the car, like Josh is recording everything. So yeah. you are doing it now. And I think your content now that you realize I don't have to have it all together sure. and it doesn't always have to be a business post, your community is growing significantly. Yeah, definitely. I think that I have given myself permission because I feel like I have reached a certain level of protected being. Yeah. You know, five years ago. And I'm like, nah, we're we we not big talked, enough. You were like, sis, I'm like, congrats it's cool, on everything but it's you're not, doing, but I'm not going I'm on not doing all that. anything. <laughs> I'm not doing all that. Just because I was, also, I think the world is different today. I think the world is way more open and ready and available to the full person. I think five years ago, you know, I raised money for Blavity in 2015, 2016, you know, it was not trendy. There were not black people raising money. I mean, there were some, but it was like the kind of thing you could count yeah. <laughs> you know, I was not at the point where I felt like this was a space that was ready for a full 360 black woman doing all her everything, my life. Yeah. And I don't think the world was ready. 
But they're ready now. But they're ready now. And, so and we're giving we are. And we're giving it to them now. <laughs> <laughs> they're getting it all. And I think that we have to be more comfortable. Like yeah. black women, you don't have to hide who you are. You don't yeah. have to play it cool. You don't have to, the you changed. know, be super overly professional to yeah. the point where you're not really being yourself. Right. And people want to see you. Like yeah. the videos where you doing you. So fun. They go crazy. Well, yeah, because they're like, look at Morgan doing the most. <laughs> and I'm like, yes, I actually do the most all the time. I just don't put it on the Internet. And that's another thing is like one of the things that I am seeing is like I see people online mm -hmm. and they're one way. Right. And then I meet them in person and it's like, girl, you are a good time. You're so like, much better in person. You're so much better <laughs> in person. Show me this. Yeah. Like, why aren't people seeing this? Yeah. And it could really be holding back your coins or partnership yeah. opportunities because personality, like, let us see that personality. I agree. I mean, I feel much freer. I don't worry about it as much now that I'm in this space. And yeah. even to the point where we're on a podcast. Yeah. We're doing a podcast right now. And we doing dances in Costa Rica. Was <laughs> like, I dance? Oh, I was rubbing my yeah. pregnant belly. It was a dance. Belly dance. It was a two-step. Don't you say I'm dancing on the internet. Because I, I really tell myself, we're not going to do the TikTok. <laughs> You know what? We're going to do one before I leave. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> it's not happening. It's not happening. Okay, so switching gears back to the people. So understood on how people should make decisions and think about their different brands. The next question that people get a lot is like monetization of brands. Okay. Okay, so let's say someone has a nine to five mm -hmm. and they're doing like a day in my life working from home for this random tech company. There's been a lot of backlash where people are actually getting fired or they think they're getting fired or laid off because of, it's kind of hard to know if it is actually what it is, but they think they're getting fired or laid off because they've been talking about their work. And I don't know, have you seen this? I've seen it, I've okay. seen it. <laughs> so I'm curious for someone who isn't an entrepreneur, let's say they're a computer science person, they're a coder, or they work as a marketing manager at yeah. a Target, whatever. Yeah. How do they build their brand as a professional, but like navigate yeah. that situation? So let me just say that your girl has been fired multiple times. Okay, fair. So I'm coming with the real here. Like I have been fired from multiple jobs, yep. you know, throughout my career. I'm talking about like in my 20s, I was the worst employee ever. <laughs> Shout out to all the people who just, the job was never for me. Like when people say, how did you become an entrepreneur? I'm like, how did I ever become an employee? Because it just was never for me. Fair. So I'm going to be honest, you know, because we always be like, yeah, I quit. No, like I got fired from from some stuff, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And it was really just because I'm creative, I'll have a big personality. Mm -hmm. I like to have fun. Mm -hmm. You can't keep me in a box. Like I <laughs> knew from day one that I was supposed to sell stuff and mm -hmm. I was supposed to talk to people. I was the girl in the back seat. My daddy was like, just shut up and enjoy the ride. I was that girl. <laughs> so with that being said, for you all who are in corporate America, because I have lost so many jobs along the journey mm -hmm. of realizing that I'm not called for corporate, I will always say you need to have something mm. on the side. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying you got to sell a product. I'm just saying that you need to be building a community. And my tagline for 2023 and on is build your community. Yeah. Why? Because we are in a place where you don't even have to sell a product, mm -hmm. right? One of my favorite young people on social media, one of my favorite young people right now is like the Gen Z guy. Oh, Andre. Andre. Oh, DeAndre. I've watched, yeah, yeah, DeAndre. Uh -huh. I've watched him grow <laughs> He's funny. and start. Yeah. And I remember when he initially started uh -huh. on Instagram, just making those videos. So good. And it was just him saying how he really felt. Yeah. It was like the character was what you really want to say. Right. But you can't say because you're under an NDA. Exactly. But look at that. He, okay, this is Ow, this Josh. is one for the books. I had to. Ow, Josh. I'm sorry, I'm Le to please leave this in. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go the other side. Because Le we could, I was like, wait, I'm seeing something. Okay. Oh, I got to. I got to. I'm sorry. This is too cute. Okay. <laughs> 
I can't with y'all. I'm sorry. Josh, how's my, could you, can you go get the toothbrush? <laughs> <laughs> Josh, can you go get the toothbrush? It's these cameras are freaking cameras for TV. Yeah, I, I mean, like, are my sideburns laid out or like, okay. I remember when DeAndre uh -huh. first came out. And his brand was just him creating this personality. And the personality was what he really wanted to say. That's right. Right. And there was no product. Mm -hmm. Right. There was no service that mm -hmm. he was selling. He was just sharing what he felt. And it was so relatable that everybody was like, Lord, I feel this way. I yes. secretly feel this way. Yeah. I secretly don't want to turn my camera on. <laughs> right. I'm not sitting up at the table. I'm in bed yes. on Zoom. Right. It was all the stuff that people really feel. Right. So when he started to do that, his audience started to grow like crazy. Mm -hmm. Now you're seeing him on red carpets. Mm -hmm. Now you're seeing brand partnerships. Yep. Now you're seeing sponsored posts. We're trying to get him to come to Afrotech. That part. Mm -hmm. And this is... What I mean when I say just start showing your authenticity, yeah. who you are, like speaking your truth, That's right. being your real self, who you are with your friends. If you're in corporate America and you're like, what should I do? Mm -hmm. Document that. Show who you are right now. Right. And people think that, oh, what I got to talk about making a million dollars. Man, everybody doesn't want to hear that. Please no. We tired of that. That's everywhere. On social media. Yeah. Oh, I can't believe I'm a million. Okay, cute. Great. But give me something for the everyday person. Right. Right. That step by step strategy of like balancing life and having a dream outside of what you're doing or that in between stage for the yeah. people who are trying to reach. So to answer your question is like, yeah, start building your thing mm -hmm. and look at your social media as a diary. Yeah. I That's like what that I would say. That's what I, I would say. also suggest, like, don't build your brand off of somebody else's brand. So one of the reasons why I think some people get in trouble is because they're really focused on this is my life at blah, blah, blah company. Oh, yeah. It's we like are seeing blah, a lot blah, of blah, that blah right company. Now. You don't own blah, blah, blah company and blah, blah, blah company could fire you. Yeah. So you don't want to build your brand on a company that you don't own. Because <laughs> we think the credibility that's what they're is trying to do. Is what's most important. And That's it's not, not that. It. I couldn't it's, tell you where DeAndre worked. Yeah. It doesn't matter because he's funny. Exactly. And let me just also say that you don't even have to do all that. Mm. I remember signing up for a community mm -hmm. and I paid for this community back in the day. So I'm going to let y'all know what my struggle was. It was getting up in the morning. Like I have mm -hmm. never been that 6 a.m. girl. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm like, Lord Jesus, I'm not going to make it today. <laughs> like I have to be there by seven. I have to get up by five. And I'm a mama. Like yeah. shout out to the mamas. I got to like get up, get up other people ready Oof. then get yourself ready then get everyone's lunch ready like that's right. a whole nother struggle mm -hmm. right so I'm like Lord I know that I'm not going to survive at this life <laughs> <laughs> there has to be something different you know for me I signed up for a community mm -hmm. and the community was about getting up early mm -hmm. I paid to be a part of a community that helped you get up Whatever early it and it taught me how to adjust my heating in my room when Cooler. I wake up in the morning mm -hmm. you know doing motivational things in the morning as far as like okay speaking positivity of yourself the temperature of your water in the morning what type mm -hmm. of breath breakfast you ate so mm -hmm. you wouldn't be tired like I pay money for that just yeah you can so learn any skill everyone thinks that you got to talk about being a millionaire mm -hmm. or if you're not standing in front of your car or your house people won't listen to you <laughs> but coming off a fake private jet yeah but I paid <laughs> money to learn how to get up three hours early that's right people will pay for anything but and also that's an incredible skill. Like even if they were successful at only getting you up 30 minutes earlier than what you would have done, maybe it wasn't 6 a.m., maybe it was just 30 minutes yeah. earlier. That's significant impact that compounds every single day for the rest of your life. And that's content. It's good content. Here for it. So everyone in corporate America, what have you overcome that you yeah. can leverage or monetize yeah. that someone else may be struggling with? Right. That's your side hustle. Or what skills have you learned on the job? So like, if you're really good at Excel, like there's a woman I follow on TikTok that all she does is teach you like Excel hacks and mm -hmm. formulas. I couldn't tell you what she looked like. Yeah. All I see is her little hands and the Excel and all the things she's typing. So I think for anyone who's listening again, get out of your head mm -hmm. and think more about what is your unique proposition in the marketplace? What are you passionate about? What are things that you could talk about forever Ever. that you nerd out about 
that you're like, I can't believe everybody else doesn't know this. Yeah, I, I have believe. I have a girl who is always talking about how she lands these jobs. Mm. And I mean, she does, shout out to Shay. She is a best friend of my project manager. She can negotiate jobs like crazy. Mm-hmm. I mean, like doing presentations mm-hmm. and she's worked for some of the top corporate companies. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at her like, this is a skill, skill set mm-hmm. because she's laying in six figure jobs back to back black woman mm-hmm. going to the best of the best companies moving up in corporate if you know how to navigate in corporate america baby that is a skill. that's a skill set i agree it's a skill and even soft skills i would pay someone to teach some of my leaders how to be kind and direct yeah like i'm not saying be an <laughs> asshole but i am saying be clear about what you're saying yeah be direct because if the ambiguity because you're trying to be too nice yeah. is actually detrimental to people because then they don't know. They can't tell if it's hot or cold. Especially being a woman. Well, you, these are typically women executives. Yeah, you have to learn how to say go to hell with a popsicle. <laughs> what is going The Journey <laughs> Podcast, y'all didn't see this if you're listening to the podcast. Josh is back here trying to take a photo. We're in the middle of our he episode. He just rolled over a workout ball in the middle That's of my the- pregnancy ball. <laughs> my little bouncy ball. Why is it there? Because okay. it can't be a big... I'm convinced that this is going to be the funniest one. <laughs> Welcome to my journey where my life is a bit of a mess. The wig brush, the workout ball. <laughs> this is my hair. This is not a wig. Thank you very much. I do have it. Well, that was a wig brush. Yes, it was. That he came over here and almost snatched her brains out with. He picked the wrong brush. (laughs) How's that matcha? It's good, girl. It's good. I'm feeling it. So I'm launching a matcha brand. I'm so proud of her, by the way, y'all. First of all, it should be expensive to launch these brands. It is a headache. And people have no idea. They think you just take cute pictures and post stuff online. And Google it from Alibaba and it just arrives at your house. Yeah, that's what they think. Listen, child. No. But this is my second consumer brand. My first one was called Amrose Essentials. And I had to shut it down because I was really launching it at a time where I didn't have the time. Yeah. Launch and I had the cash flow. Yeah. So I was like, oh, I'll just pay the people and, you know, whatever. This your retirement, Brian. <sighs> Listen. So, my new strategy, I had too many SKUs mm-hmm. and I wasn't able to use the skincare all the time. Like, I wasn't going to get on Instagram again, and, do this, it. and be doing my skincare every day because I'm like, I'm working. Like, this is not my full time. You just job. need to flow in your strengths. So, this is a matcha brand. Okay. And I do drink matcha every day. And so it's going to be much easier to just be like, make a matcha and then go about and my day. And go on a matcha day. <laughs> like, <laughs> make a matcha. Well, it tastes good. Thank you. I'm like, it's good though. <laughs> <laughs> it took a whole year for the green leaves from Japan to get here. Okay. Because they only grow matcha leaves during a, our spring. So it's not like you can order a batch of matcha and be like, it's on its way. It's yeah. like you have to grow the matcha leaves. So it's a bit of an ambitious product. But it's delicious and nutritious. I'm excited for you. Thank you. Anyways, sign up for more matcha. (laughs) Morematcha.com. It's the plug. It's the plug for me. (laughs) All right. Anyways, y'all, I'm glad that Ronnie came. We're going to wrap the episode. Ronnie, where can people find you? Where can people learn more about the work that you do? And if they're interested in how to navigate their brand and just learn from the GOAT. Yeah. We're going to find you. So the first thing that you all can do is find me at IgniteYourBrandLive.com. That's my website. You can also find me on Instagram at Ronnie Brown. Pull up on me. <laughs> I'm joking. Ronnie, please, don't, please don't pull up on her. Please don't pull up on if me. If you see her in public, don't go up to her. No. Just wave. All right. So I'm different. If you see me in public, pull up on me. Give me a hug. I'm super social. I will talk your head off. And If I'm there, please don't. <laughs> Morgan is totally opposite. I be sitting there talking to people for like 40 minutes and my friends be dragging me like, bring your tail on. Or not. Exactly. So come up to me, hug me, show me the love. I'm here for it. Yeah, come say hi. But Instagram, R-O-N-N-E. Brown, there's no I in the Ronnie. Don't ask me why. Shout Um, out to your mom. Yeah, shout out to my mom and daddy for trying to do something different. But yeah, pull up on me. Unless I'm there. Unless more is <laughs> there. Just wave at us. We'll wave back. Because she is the only person I know that she has this, the most serious social anxiety. She would be looking at you like, what are we doing here? <laughs> it's not social anxiety. I'm just like processing like what is happening right now. 
Well, because you know, it's a really weird thing when people you, recognize you. You get anxiety when people come up to it. Because I'm just like, I wasn't expecting it. You are one of my friends <laughs> that I'm just like, you haven't realized how you inspire other people. So yeah. we're out. Oh, like Lord. we have been out at a restaurant. I will not go into detail. <laughs> <laughs> but someone has like walked up to us and she's just like shocked. And it's not that you're not like a nice social person. It's just that it surprises you. Yeah. And I just think that you have not realized yet. Like, girl, people are true. people are inspired. And when they see you, they want to come say hi. But it's like, you're like, why are they coming up to me? I'm. You're like, I'm not the person that come up to. But like, you are the person that come up to. I, thank you. It may I be pulling up I on you too. It. Like, yes. But not but in a way where they're trying to holler, but right. they are really inspired. Yeah, I think that's the sweetest. And you are just like, what is going on? <laughs> well, usually what's really happening is we'll be in some deep conversation about some philosophical thing. I'm minding my own business. This has happened. I'm outside. I'm having a good time. You know, we're, we're having in, brunch. Yeah, somewhere. we're having brunch. We're in D.C. Mm-hmm. We're here in Nashville. We're doing whatever. Mm-hmm. So I'm like in it. When I'm in it, I'm in it. I'm like locked in. So when a stranger walks by you, you're not thinking about they're going to come say hello. And you're just you're like, like a stranger's walking by. like, hey, Morgan. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> hello. And then you're like, hello. And I'm like, hey, girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then I'm like, may I help you with something? <laughs> like, what would you like? Like, do you want a hug? Do you want to? But then they don't really know what they want. That's the part that kills me. I'm like, so, okay, cool. Hi. Well, let's add this to the what you need to know Tell before me. building a brand. <laughs> Tell me. Best friends, you need to know that once you build that brand, people are going to start to look up to you. They're yeah. going to start running up on you when you <laughs> eating your food with your family. They're yeah. going to start like asking you for hugs. They're going to like, can I rub you? Because I want this Someone to test the, the other day. Can I rub your belly? I was like, yeah. Um, but that comes with it. Yeah. So to everyone who's out here trying to go viral, you're trying to be super be successful, careful. know what comes with that yeah. and prepare yourself. I'm not saying you can't have boundaries, but, you know, I'm with the people. So I'm like, pull up on me. Like, I'm ready for I'm this. I'm always nice, but I'm always definitely surprised. Yeah, you and are it shocked. Takes me, because people don't really know me, it, mm-hmm. it takes me a second to process things and you can tell I'm processing. Yeah. So they're like, oh, you're like, and I'm like, like I get stuck, like, Hi. Yeah. And then you or somebody else would be like, and you're like, oh, hi. I'm like, so Morgan will give you bougie and I will give you bougie ghetto. And I'm like, what's up, y'all? Like, pull up, get a seat. And this is why I love my friends because Ronnie will make sure that I don't look crazy. There's been times when I've been like, so like, how do I know you? Yeah. And then I'll like come back to that person. I'll be like, Hey, you caught me off guard, mm-hmm. but hello. Mm-hmm. Because I'm like, I'm not mean. But I just, just don't hold it against her, y'all. Just don't hold it she against is, me. She'd be in a different world. I really, yeah. Yeah. So just get prepared if you want to build your brand. People are <laughs> going to fall in love with you online. They're going to want to meet you. They're yeah. going to hug you. And that comes with building that community. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. It is a sign of success and warmth and that people feel like they know you, even if you've never met them. And those are the people who are going to come to the conferences. Those are the people who are going to refer you to people. Those are the people that are going to put your name in the rooms. Those are my champions. Period. Shout out to my champions. I call them the (laughs) rotter dies. Those are my rotter dies. They are about it, about it. We have about it, about it closet blavity. It's like, we'll interview somebody and I'll be like, okay, but are they going to be about it, about it? Like, at the end of the day, well, we're trying to make it. We're going A or we doing B. Exactly. Are you going to be about it, about it or not? Those are Are the people. "Um, It is 447. (laughs) I'm like, yeah, but it's not five o'clock. Let's go. (laughs) (laughs) All right, y'all. Are you texting me right now? Oh, no, it's Kate. You should have it on silent. This is the most unedited podcast. No, no, I have it on silent, but I have an exception for you. Anyways. <laughs> I love you guys. Y'all, this is the real. Please keep this, all this stuff in because it's going to be hilarious. This is what I deal with. We have too many listeners for me to actually <laughs> not edit this. Too many people will understand who I really am. Anyways, thank you guys. Please rate it on all the things. Please share it. Please subscribe to the newsletter where I give you all types of tactics and links and all the things. Please follow my lovely friend.
You guys, make sure you like, subscribe, share this podcast. Send it to your BFF. Send it to your BFF who is in corporate transitioning, trying to build that brand, or who is a full-time entrepreneur who needs that fire lit under her or him. Yes. Send it to them. Make sure you all connect and follow the Journey Podcast. Make sure you go to YouTube. Subscribe on YouTube Subscribe because I'm about to YouTube. be done with y'all on YouTube. <laughs> it's too much work. Yes, it's a lot of work on YouTube. Just kidding. Love y'all. <laughs> Thanks for listening to The Journey Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure you leave a review and head to our Instagram and YouTube to leave a comment. I look forward to hearing how this podcast has made an impact on your own journey.